have a very exciting guest today. We got another nurse in the house. So our guest today blends science and sexuality, which is one of my biggest turn-ons. And her mission is to help people live life fully from a place of magic, love, and abundance. And as a transformational Tantra coach, so we can all better understand our bodies, respect ourselves, and deepen our connections with our partners. She focuses on harnessing the power of your body to master self-love. Please welcome registered nurse and certified Tantra educator, Dominique Davida. Hey, everyone. So I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a juicy conversation. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Dominique's been, John, we were just shooting the shit before we started recording, and Dominique's (laughs) been cracking us up. So you guys are in for a real, she, she, we were just talking about how she's a registered nurse for, you know, 30 years, and she got us going. She's like, yeah, well, you know, it's the sperm facials that help me look so young. (laughs) Tell me this is a real conversation because we need to talk about it. She's like, no, just fucking with you. Yeah. She had me going, though. I was like, girl, I will do anything to look like you. Give me the, put the sperm on my face. I don't give a shit. Well, you know, pleasure is medicine and orgasms are like the fountain of youth so being orgasmic Mm -hmm. is really amazing it it releases a lot of amazing hormones and creates a a cascade of amazing things to happen Mm -hmm. within our bodies so absolutely Mm. amazing yes masturbation and climaxing is a health conversation over here most definitely most definitely and if you notice like sometimes as a nurse I'll just share in the hospitals, I could see people, you could just tell when people are kind of stuck with their sexual energy, like they're very repressed, they seem really uptight, they're really disconnected, they don't really flow and they're in their vibrance and feeling it, you know, feeling in their sensuality, they're just so like kind of cold and and disconnected because they have shame about it or whatever, and a lot of times those, the, that population of people, they would be coming in and they would have like different illnesses and illnesses regarding their reproductive organs and things like that because we're disconnecting from our power center and it's it's important that our sexual energy flows because then it gets stagnant and kind of stuck in our places and it's not healthy because disease is just dis-ease and pleasure is medicine so if you're feeling good about yourself then you know your body's your body will respond I love absolutely that. oh my pleasure gosh is pleasure medicine. is medicine yeah. i hope you wrote that down on a post-it somewhere i already, I already am i'm like <laughs> typing i'm like pleasure yeah. is medicine I, Katie, Katie, I was like katie you better get me post-its for my birthday she got me like a costco sized <laughs> box of post-its i'm like where are they they're in, like i think they're in my bedroom right now <laughs> um but anyways let's let's dive right in um dominique so tell us a little bit about um, you and Yes Tantra, and in a nutshell, how you got started in this realm of work and what brought you to this journey of Yes Tantra, and tell us a little bit about it. Okay, great. I love this. So I've always been fascinated with sex since I was a young, a young age. You know, I'm born on Halloween. I'm a Scorpio, or like the sex sign of the zodiac. So I was always curious, and even being seven or eight years old, I'd be reading my mother's cosmopolitan magazines, or finding her Playboy magazines, right? I was always curious about everything. And then as a teenager, I would be watching, you know, Sex Talk with Dr. Ruth back in the day. So Mm -hmm. I was always very inquisitive about it. And then it just became a natural thing. And when I first had my first relationship where I lost my virginity and we were together for four years, I literally never had an orgasm. I thought I was quote unquote frigid, which isn't really a thing, but that's what I was thinking at that time. And I literally even had a child and never had had an orgasm which really sucked. And I was like, Oh, I'm enjoying sex, but I, you know, things feel good about it, but I guess I just can't orgasm. And then after that lover, that partner and we married divorced. And then the next person I was with, I had these amazing orgasms and I was like, yes. So that was my journey. And (laughs) and then I just became, you know, um, so curious about everything as I started learning more about my body and just became, you know, I was more like Samantha on Sex in the City, and I would go on these escapades and just was very having a good time and doing all my field research. That's why I'm a sex expert. You have to have 10,000 hours, and I've done the research and so that I can come back and give the information to everyone here and share. And so it's been quite a journey, and I was really just having a great time giving my friends sex advice all the time. Like I shared when I would work in the operating room, and I would be with the OR crew, and the patients would be asleep. I would be giving sex tips. In fact, one time a patient woke up from surgery and when she woke up, the the first word she said was, I love to be naked. And I was like, oh my God, like subconsciously, she must have tapped into our conversation. She was really hilarious. 
And so um, I was always giving the, the tips into my friends. And one time I remember when my daughters were teenagers, I was watching on Oxygen Channel. I was watching Talk Sex with Sue Johnson. And I was studying, you know, to get an extra certification as a nurse. And my daughter, my daughter was in like 12. She walks in and she sees me. She's like, oh my gosh, mom, someday that's going to be you on TV talking about sex. Because I was very open about giving advice to my friends, giving her the right information as she was entering puberty. Like I was not uptight about talking about it. And then my friends are like, the sex tip or position you tell me saved my marriage. You know, this really helped me so much. And they were like, you need to write a book. And I was having like better sex than like 90% of my friends. And then at the age of 44, almost a decade ago, I um, had an encounter with a lover that had studied Tantra and had mastered it for males. The peak performance mastery that males can achieve in Tantra is they're able to separate their orgasm from their ejaculation. I teach my male clients this. So they can be multi-orgasmic and have stamina for hours. So sex can last as long as you both want it to last. And then the males aren't going to be drained afterwards. So that's, you know, that really helped me have my awakening. And when I first had that experience, we had sex for five hours. We weren't on any substances. And I did not know he had had this training. And I'd, I'd been interested in Tantra for like a decade, but hadn't found the person to explore it with. Mm -hmm. And we were just kind of hooking up. And I was like, whoa, this is unexpected. And so five hours of amazing pleasure. And one of my friends was like, oh, my gosh, like, why do you always like to have sex for a long time? Don't you get tired of that? But if males are doing sex like what they see in porns and they're just doing that big jackrabbit move that they think is so great for us and it's not and we just feel like we're being performative or it's work, of course, five hours will be fucking exhausting and boring, you know, but when someone is able to really like drop in and be fully present, connect with you with a heart connection, a soul connection and just honor you like you're the goddess and just support you and having orgasm after orgasm with prolonged states of pleasure and bliss. That shit was life-changing, and I had such a huge, I had what they call in Tantra and in yoga, the Kundalini awakening, and like the, in my chakras and my energy centers, and people that don't know this is a little woo, but it's factual though, facts, um, I opened up my third eye and my crown chakra, and I had my awakening, and that like changed me forever, and then I was like, this is the shit that really helps heal people, and pleasure is medicine, and I used to help with open heart surgeries a lot, and I was like, Tantra these are the tools to open people's hearts because I started exploring it. I began to transform from the inside out and it has been a game changer. I, my only regret is that I wish I would have known about this and had this experience earlier in my life because it changed my life. Mm. So on so many levels, like I can't even begin to describe. Wow. Mm, wow. I have been, I've been wanting to study like taught, like I've, you know, we've, We've obviously interviewed people before and touched the edges of Tantra, but it is something that I definitely, and I've never heard anyone share it quite like you just did. And mm, now I'm you. really enrolled. Yes. <laughs> the next, the next thing, well, so the next morning when I would get up, I get up and I have errands to go run. I'm living in LA at the time. And he looks at me and he was like, Oh, are, will you come? Are you going to come back tonight? And then he was like, will you come back tonight when you do everything? And I was like, is that a question? I'm here. Like, I'm here for this. And then when I returned the next night, I thought that, like, maybe it had been a fluke. I didn't know. He just still didn't tell me he had studied Tantra. And I was like, wow, that was, like, really great chemistry we had. And then whenever we did this again, and it was, like, a whole five-hour journey of amazing pleasure. And it felt literally like 20 minutes maybe passed by because they say right. time flies when you're having fun. So it didn't. I knew a lot had taken place, but it was, like, really blowing my mind that, like, it was so much, so much time had passed. And then the, that second night, I just sat up in the bed and I looked him in the eye and I was said, I just want to clone you and give one of you to all my friends. Because in that moment, my heart almost <laughs> like sank because I was like, I don't even know how to begin to explain this to my friends. And I feel so sad for them that they'll never experience this because I was already giving sex advice on Playboy Radio. I already was having better sex than 90% of my friends. And I was like, you know, one like... When I discovered this, I was like, I would have, I realized I'd barely been scratching the surface of what was possible with sex, yeah. like the tip of the iceberg and down deep, there was so much more for me to experience. And I never knew it. I already thought I was having the best sex of my life. And this just took me like, like a quantum leap in my sex life and my orgasmic experience. Wait a minute. So you're, you went on a date, you would, you're dating this guy. 
he doesn't tell you that he studies tantra and then you just have sex with him for the first time and it's this that's like the best move i've ever heard like gentlemen listening this is the move This is well, and move. speaking for our gentlemen out there, a couple of things that I imagine are, are sticking out as big sirens for people listening right now. For our male audience being like, five hours, how the fuck is that even possible, right? Mm-hmm. And then also, um, the other thing that really stuck out too is, okay, so as women, something we teach here as sex and empowerment communication coaches is that we are responsible for our pleasure. I have a question for you. Yes, I love it. Yes. Does... With that, With that being said, said that, is that is a truth we really believe and we stand by and it's a core to our, to the work that we are doing with, with our, uh, with our clitorati. I believe in that as well. Is there, right. Right. Okay. So, okay, so we're responsible for our pleasure and all that, right? Yes. And, and my question is, does the partner make a difference after being with a, you know, master tantrique? Oh, oh all the difference. Actually, oh, I'll admit okay. like for a while, my life. We dated for a bit and then I decided I needed to do my healing journey with Tantra and because I had some bad patterns in relationships and things that I needed to delve into and I understood the energetics of like, um, I can't put a body condom on someone and protect myself from their bad energy if they haven't been doing their inner work and don't have their shit cleared out from their traumas or their anger issues or whatever. Yeah. And so then yeah. I, with the, I had that awareness mm. about energetics and I started getting those like downloads and drop-ins of things. I just took a pause and just started healing the unhealthy patterns I'd had that were kept attracting these same types of lovers. Cause often we think, oh, all women are the same. All men are the same. Well, no, we're the common denominator a lot of times. And we have these yeah. patterns that we're not noticing. And we just like, we go next and go to someone else, but we start doing the same behaviors and the same mm-hmm. things again and have the same results. And then we would break up with that person just to repeat the cycle. So breaking those vicious cycles, one. And then after that, I was like, now my rule of thumb is like, I won't be with anyone unless I would want to be like that person. Like they inspire me in some way that I see that they're doing their things. And it did slow down my love life a lot. And the reason I'm so passionate about teaching these techniques to men is because very few men know these techniques. I did after like a year later, I ended up manifesting because I used my orgasms to manifest things. Uh, another lover that didn't study Tantra, but had read a bunch of books on these things when he was a teenager that his father had growing up and had started doing the exercises and stuff. And he had taught himself. And then we would have sex again for like five hours at a time. And that was really amazing. But I've been with very few lovers and I've been with a lot of fucking people Hundreds, I'm sure. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I'm sure. And I've been with a lot of men because I'm, you know, I'm 50. So, um, and so many of them do not, aren't even, not aware of this. And it's not to shame them. It's just like, they're not taught. We're not educated that this is even possible. Right. So for me, I, you know, I love this. There's this one poem that I love. It's called conscious cock is medicine, but it really is. And it's not that they have to be responsible for our pleasure. But when a man, have you noticed, well, one, okay, females, we're very intuitive. We're so fucking intuitive, right? Yeah. And sometimes, have you ever experienced this? I have. I know a lot of females, a lot of clients of mine will share this with me, that when you're with a male lover, it feels like they're just masturbating in their body, in your body. Mm. Like they feel, you can tell they're kind of disconnected. Like they're more thinking of sex becomes very performative, very goal oriented to the orgasm. And they might be thinking of a lot of things. Like I'd had a lover before that I'd had 20 orgasms with. And I was like, why did I never want to be with that dude again? And we stayed as friends. But he had told me after the sex that, and this is before my Tantra experience, he said, oh, I was thinking of math equations and things in my head so I wouldn't ejaculate so quick. And that's Aww. sweet of him. But at the same yeah. time, I was like, why was there a disconnect? But I think it's on a like my, I'm a big empath. I could sense. And I was like, I, even though on a technical level, like if we're judging in sports, like ice skating or a technical score, great. But on that, that sense of me really feeling that connection and really feeling very seen and honored in the process and having a deep connection with the person, I wasn't able to form that kind of connection because they were being so disconnected by staying up here in their mind and not dropping in with me. So ha- the mm. presence, like having meditative practices, your brain is your largest sex organ. That's how Tantra helps you. 
And then you can drop in and let go of all the, the monkey mind distractions and really focus on your partner. It's just an honoring. And like, how often do we really get to explore that we are able to have prolonged pleasure for two, three, four, five yeah. hours? Yeah. I, so we have a lot of parents that listen to the show, a lot of moms. So I have a question on behalf of this community um, to staying in pleasure for three plus hours. Sounds like there's a lot of health benefits to the body, right? Yes. What is your rebuttal to people who like for our parents who might say, well, I don't have time to make love I mean, I'm to my husband or and wife. Like, How do you find five hours to make love to someone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you say to that person? Well, one, you should prioritize your pleasure. You know, we put all these other priorities, priorities above ourselves. And again, pleasure is medicine. And it can be deeply, like, you can have a deep connection. Now, sometimes, a lot of times, I will, even if I have a lover that has that skill, we might just have sex for 30 minutes or sex for an hour, and it will just be, we'll be connecting on a deeper level with our energetically mm -hmm. and just being able to drop in and be present. And mm -hmm. so often in our society, in our world, people can have sex on a, like, we want a soulmate. We, we think, oh, I want to find my t twin flame. I want to have a soul-matched experience. But if we only know how to have superficial sex, we're only going to be able to have superficial lovers mm. because, you know, we need to be able to drop in and connect that way. So, so often whenever we're having sex, we can be skin to skin and ego to ego, but can we really drop the walls and drop the mask and drop the armor around our hearts and really full be, fully mm. be vulnerable and present and allowing ourselves to fully be seen and fully see the other person? Like... How edgy is it sometimes to make eye contact? And then Tantra, you do a lot of eye gazing because it's a lot of yeah. connection. I so it's actually, depth of connection. So I'm, yeah, I was actually. So I'm really getting that even the quality of the presence with one another is more important than the time. Because even if we're together for four hours, but we're not fully dropped in and present, well, it's more important the intention and the intensity of that presence. Yes, sugar. And it could be 30 minutes and make time for our pleasure. And what I'm getting is that there's are some great benefits to being in pleasure for, for larger periods of time. Yeah, it was so profound. It was as if, you know, we have these chakras or these energy centers in our body and mm. our sexual chakras are at the bottom of the root by where our tailbone is. And so often we have blocks like in our heart chakra, we have different blocks, but being able to have that pleasure and those energy centers in my body be activated and then de breathing mm -hmm. deeply. And he would breathe deep and guide me into breathing deep and then allowing that pleasure to circulate up through my body all the way up to my third eye, to my crown chakra allowed me to have this expansion because Tantra is really a tool for expansion. So you have this expansion, mm -hmm. your energy, your, your aura field is bigger and you get really tapped in and have more intuition, more discernment. And it's really healthy for your body systems. And you can do this even in a 20 minute self pleasure, a ritual or other things that I teach with Tantra practices where you can just circulate, learn how to circulate your sexual energy through your body. Cause often we allow all of our sex energy to stay congested in our pelvic area and we don't use breath to allow it to fully right. flow through yeah, us. So let's, so let's jump into that a little bit. So I, I know that you talked a little bit about, um, you were able to use Tantra to sort of dismantle some patterns that didn't work for you. A, a, a big topic that we have here on this show is really dismantling shame as an access yes. to intimacy. Can you speak to some of the specific modalities that you use in the dismantlement of shame or patterns as, and you know, in the realm of sex and empowerment and like accessing that intimacy that people are desiring? Great question. I'm really big on dropping shame as well. And if you, whenever I work with my clients, I talk to them about the emotional frequency scale and an emotional frequency scale. If anyone Googles up the image of that at the very top levels of, um, on the emotional frequency scale is like j love, joy, bliss at the top. And the frequency mm -hmm. in Hertz is like 700 or 800, something like that. Yeah. The very bottom of the frequency scale, the very bottom at the Hertz of 20, compared to 700 is shame. Shame is even below fear and hate. So whenever we are in those energetic states and we're feeling shame in our body, that's how we start to get dis-ease in our body because we're holding on to this negative energy and we're disconnecting from our sexual energy. And we are literally wired for pleasure. We have all these amazing nerve endings, right? 
pleasure is our birthright. So what I like to just go in with them is a lot of self-love, a lot of talking with them about the mother father wound. Maybe they had some programming from their parents or past lovers that would slut shame them or whatever has happened and do like, if it's a past lover, do things like removing toxic, toxic soul ties and energetic cords to, to reclaim your aura field and your energy centers. And then also to work on the root chakra where we work with the mother wound, the father wound and do some inner child healing. And then I'll go back and I'm asking them like, what were the stories that you were told about sex growing up or what are the beliefs that you've taken on? And like, is this really true for you? And you know, our parents were just doing the best they had with the limited information they had and the generational trauma passed down. And now because of platforms like this and these conversations, it, we can break these cycles, which is so important with what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. yeah. So we, I, I dig that. in deep. Yeah. Cutting to toxic soul ties. I've done, I've done like cord cutting. Is it similar to like cord cutting? Yes, it is yeah. similar, but instead of like doing a cutting, I do a thing where it's like a cord removal where we are like literally almost like imagine like weeding a garden and pulling the weeds out that we want to get all the way to the root of that and pull that out and find out where those places are energetically in their bodies. And my clients have really powerful shifts after that. I feel like I I've could use some done root that. pulling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's really so freeing. Well, because so I've done the cord cutting and it works for a while, but then I, I start to feel there's like a specific ex-lover that I have him start to creep into my dreams again. And I and they're a different kind of dream. And I'm like, oh, he's trying to get into my my dreams again. And then I have to like do it again. But I love that concept of like pulling it from the root. That's amazing. Yes, it's so, really, really powerful. So we were going through mm. your... Um, everything about you and we have we have a we, I, we want to know what is sexual transmutation great question so in <laughs> back in the 1930s there's this book very well-known book one of the top books for like self-help and in business called um, think and grow rich by napoleon hill oh and chapter mm -hmm. 11 is titled the mystery of sexual transmutation and these practices were used by nikola tesla steve jobs thomas edison to tap into their creative genius but back in the 1930s, you couldn't talk. That was really edgy that you even dedicated a full chapter. But this is how important this is. Yeah, that book came so, out in like the 1930s. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So amazing. Yeah. I mean, wow. like, like 90 years so later, it, you yeah. still get pushed back on these conversations, right? So you can imagine that was super edgy. But at the time, he was interviewing all of the most successful people in that time period, over 100 people, Abraham Lincoln, Tom said so like a lot of um, Andrew Carnegie mm -hmm. and a lot of the the greats and asking them what had they done to, to have their success. And a lot of them would talk about knowing how to master their sexual energy. So this is also a lot for males because males will leak a lot of their sexual energy by frequent ejaculation. That's why those tantra mm -hmm. techniques are powerful, but our sexual energy is our most creative energy. It's our life force energy. We're literally created from that. And so there should be no shame in such creation. Like that's the reason we're here, right? Yeah. So, so if we want, we don't just have to create a child with that energy. We can focus that energy towards what our heart's desires are, rock, use it as rocket fuel for law of attraction, and really channel that into, with creativity, into like what our passion projects are. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you notice, mm -hmm. if you're doing a passion project, you're really putting a lot of your heart and soul into it, you might notice that you're not interested in sex as much and, you're, and you might wonder why, but that's why, because it all comes from your sacral chakra where your creativity and a lot of your sexual energy is. And so it's like, how do you transmute that? How do you know how to cultivate it and building up your pelvic floor? It's like the energy. It's like your pelvic floor is like this bowl with the muscles and we don't want to have any leaks in the pelvic floor. And then we want to know how to, um, keep, you know, so the energy's not leaking out. And then we want to know how to do things like breath work practices and things like that. PC squeezes, other things to ramp up and cultivate more of that energy and then focus it in on what we're wanting and focusing it through our energy centers. So we're in our own full power. And that's why I think there's so much shame in our society on sex, because it's easier to control a population if they're disempowered and they're disconnected from their power center. And that's what shame is doing to us. Mm. Holy shit. It is easier to control a population. Say that one more time. That was yes, like, it, it is easier to control a population that has shame about their sexuality and is disconnected from their sexual power and their sexual energy. Mm. And so this is why Tantra from India is very similar with 
ancient practices with Taoist techniques from like China. Yeah. And in China, like the emperors would use these techniques, but they would keep this knowledge away from the common people because mm -hmm. it was empowering them and they wanted to stay in power. Wow. Right. That's, I mean, that makes so much sense, but that is so wild. So that's why even our parents didn't know about it because it was so hush hush. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if everybody was connected to their pleasure, not only do we believe there'd be more peace on this planet, but I mean, you couldn't keep a lid on those folks. Everyone would be so empowered and be living their truth, and that may go against well, an agenda. Well, I mean, look at look at what's happening even in the last decade or 20, I would say like, yeah, like, uh, well, even the, since like the 1920s, right? Since women really started to become like sexually empowered, how different the world is. And another thing Again, is we won't be as big for me. You know, one of the big things too was me realizing I didn't really need, I, I realized that I have so much magic and power within me. It's just that we're taught in our society to look outward for the answers and we need things outside of us. And that makes us really good consumers, right? Mm. So when we have this dissatisfaction within ourselves and we look at ourselves and we're staying disempowered, we're trying to find our power outside of us all the time. And then we're trying to get status mm. symbols and get this to, to make us feel better. But when we can tap into this and have ecstatic, prolonged ecstatic states of bliss, you're like, oh, I don't even need that status symbol. I thought, I'm good. I'm just going to be laying here in bed. <laughs> You know, having a good old time. Like, I'm I don't need even need that. Like, I'm going to go have sex for five hours. Right? Yeah. Go, like, <laughs> Priorities. I don't even yes. plan to leave the house all weekend. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> living your best life right yes. there. That's down yes. on the bills, that's for sure. Yes. So, so a Definitely. hot topic always with our listeners and our, um, and, and even amongst us is multiple orgasms. <laughs> do you have any tangible tips of, you know, of ways that both men and women can achieve? Like how, where do you even start? It seems like this elusive thing that is like, you know, I've, you know, I've done 200 episodes of sex podcasts. The most orgasms I've ever had was like two or two <laughs> like in a single session. So I'm like, I just like, it seems so elusive. Like where do we even start with that conversation? Love this. So first I'll start with the males. And one thing is for males, I teach my male clients how to be multi-orgasmic. One of my clients is like, I can feel my orgasm now from my big toe down to, to, from my top of my head all the way down to my big toe. He was like, I didn't even know this was possible. Another one of my clients, he was um, taking Viagra and Viagra wasn't working for him. And he and his wife, um, he wasn't able to have sex with his wife and they were in their 60s. And now he's having better sex with his wife at 60 than when they were 30. He's like, I have like an hour long session with her before work. She has six to eight orgasms at a time. I'm wow. ready to go again the next day. He's like, I feel so much power in my penis. I wish I discovered this 15 years ago, which is so bomb. But to with neuroplasticity and how the brain works, with males, I need to teach them to how to have a different, create a new neuro, a pleasure pathway so that they can prolong their pleasure. Because if you think about it, when we're teenagers, we, when we masturbate or preteens, whenever it is, when we're masturbating at home, we don't want to be caught by our parents. So we do everything very fast to get from point A to point B. And for males, what that does then is it reprograms in their brain with neuroplasticity that like, it's almost like a ski slope. Like you're just going to slide down that the deeper that the more times you do it that way, the deeper the groove is in the brain, the faster you go down that slope. It's a slippery slope. Now, if you want to now you go off to a whole other path, it's going to slow things down. And then we're rewiring things and having you have a prolonged experience of pleasure. So for males, it takes quite some time, you know, six months to a year. They start having better sex within a, you know, six weeks or so working with me. But to have the full ability to have all this and have multiple orgasms takes a longer period of time because mm. they have to tap into their energy. It's a whole other thing. Now for females... For them to be multi-orgasmic, there's a lot of things that Tantra really helps us with. One is the three main tenets of Tantra are breath, sound, and movement. So using your breath is key. If you've ever, ever had this, um, this experience where, I mean, I've had it so many times where I'm like right on the verge of having like a fucking mind-blowing orgasm. I'm like, oh my God, this is about to feel so good. It's like going at the roller coaster. Right? I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? When the beat's about to drop, I'm like, it's happening. And then all of a sudden, it just disappears. I'm like, where the fuck did that go? I was like so turned on. What just happened? <laughs> and and so I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then when I started studying Chancer, I started to understand when we breathe deeply, 
what we're doing, you're going to think of like your orgasm is like a candle. And with a candle, you have the flicker of the flame. And that's how your orgasmic energy is. And how often, if you really think about it and notice when you're self-pleasuring or having sex, how often do we tense ourselves up, one, but most importantly, we hold our breath. And when we're holding our breath, we're like, it feels so good. And so we start to like tense up sometimes because that's how we've been experiencing sex for so long. And we're holding our breath. Then what's doing is you're depleting or diminishing the oxygen that's getting to your sex organ. So just like not giving oxygen to the candle flame, it snuffs it out and it's gone. And then if you're holding tension in your body with to be in your most orgasmic state, it requires surrender and you to be really receptive. And that also is important that your partner is someone that you trust, that you feel very safe with, that you feel like you can be vulnerable with. Because when your partner can create safety, especially with the, for the female, for the feminine energy to really flow orgasmically, when we feel safe and we feel like our heart chakra and our heart center were open, and um, Tantra, the pussy or vagina is referred to as the yoni or sacred space, mm -hmm. then the yoni, it's like a flower and it starts to open more. So then our orgasms will flow even more. But it all is like when the heart space open, then all of that starts to open as well. And then doing yoni egg practices and things like that. My clients will start having G-spot orgasms or just get wetter or have be gushing. And so what you want to do, the tip I will share here is, are you ready for a tip? Yes. Okay. Uh, is imagine that, and so I won't get too technical into the chakra work. We'll just imagine that from your pussy to the top of your head, you have like a straw inside your body connecting up and all you're wanting to do is your sex energy even for males for the penis you want to get the sex energy that the turn on energy the arousal you want to because where attention goes energy flows so even vis just visualize and breathe in and even having your eyes closed is good because when we're looking with our eyes open energy goes out so have that in and just breathe it all the way up to the top of your head even if you're masturbating or self-pleasuring you can just touch the top of your head to have some tactile stimulation and remind yourself to Breathe it to the top and then just exhale and let it just kind of wash down over you. And then like breathe it back up and then let it wash back down over you. And that will help you have more intense orgasms. And so for males, if you notice that your lover is like really getting excited and is about on, you can sense that she's about to have an orgasm. What you can do is even just you start breathing deeply and whisper in her ear and just it, have her mirror you with your breathing or just say reminder breathe deep, take in deep breaths. It's okay. And just, you know, that way sh she'll relax. Cause when we let go of tension, that helps too. And then, uh, the other tenant, like I said, the three tenets of Tantra breath sound movement sound is really great. So being able to use moaning and things like that are great because sound is like a thief and it steals tension from our body. So when we're moaning, we're letting go of that tension, right? And we're in more into that receptivity, into the ability to surrender. And then that ability allows the most orgasms to flow for us. Now, a lot of times in modern in our modern world, a lot of females have, and no judgment, this is me, before Tantra, I was very heavy in my masculine energy. I was very guarded. I was like, anything a man can do, I can do, you know, and I had kept all these walls up. And we have these walls, and we think we're keeping the bad things out, but we're also keeping the good things out. And so whenever we're able to drop some of those walls and really tap more into our feminine energy and realize that it's not a weakness that's actually our strength then we're actually able to experience more orgasmicness the more we feel safe the more we're in our feminine it's because it's just the flow mm. Mm. wow that's awesome I love, I love listening to you speak I know oh, thank I you too. so much everyone like, you're extraordinary, you're extraordinary. Thank you. yeah yeah so my clients will one of them <laughs> Yeah, sound and then movement. So even right before having sex, another great way to amp up your orgasms is to dance first, mm -hmm. to take some time to dance. And that's why I was like, oh, no wonder when I would go to the club, I wouldn't drink. I just don't drink alcohol. It's just not my thing because for generations of my family, we were alcoholics. So I was like, I'm not playing with that. Yeah. But I would be like, no wonder after the club, people want to hook up more because we're in there dancing and you're actually activating your like... Um, any stagnant energy or stuck energy, you're actually able to like move that through your body. You're getting more blood flow to your sex organs. You know, you're taking in oxygen, you're having breath, sound movement, and you just get things pumping and you're ready to go. So if you get things pumping before you're going to have sex, 
and have some dancing or bring yourself pleasure and have some dancing and things that are, you know, twerking is great for your root chakra. Do things that are activating your pelvis. And one time I'd had a lover that I had great sex with. And then I had gone to like a Christmas party at work and I'm older, but I knew Tantra then. I was like, I went to a Christmas party at work and there was a DJ and I just danced and danced and danced for hours. And then afterwards I called him up and I was like, I'll come over and we'll have sex. And I literally had the most crazy squirting orgasms. Oh. And I was like, wow, how did I? And then I just thought, Oh, because I danced so much before. And then that's why <laughs> this time know. now I squirted with him because it was like my body was more prepped up and my mm. the, the juices were flowing, you know? So yeah. I was more receptive to that. Oh, my God. I love these awesome. simple, simple, simple tips. tips. It's like, it's like small, small shifts tips. for quantum leaps, right? right? My husband and I are like trying for our second kid right now and – I'm actually going to take some of these on because having sex every day, like while I'm ovulating is, has been not that fun to be honest. It's just kind of like, gosh, okay, we have to do it. When are we going to do it? And then I was like, I had 15 minutes, like before this recording, I was like, can we get it in? And it was unsuccessful. Um, and I feel like these tips are very, um, easy to do. I'm going to dance after this and get myself juiced up yeah get things going and that, make it fun yeah which is so perfect because you lead all of our ecstatic dance like sessions before our sex and empowerment classrooms so i feel like you know honestly we're making goes. a whole new meeting now knowing this you know i know yeah we're making a baby so there's no like butt action which is kind of my thing and so sex just kind of seems like not as fun what just if you like started with the butt and ended with the vagina? Well, because um, you don't want to take it. Maybe if you started with the butt with a condom, but then because you don't want to yeah. go from. Oh, no, no, no. To, Obviously, yeah. you have to wash yeah. in between. Wash in Because I don't know if that, that, that might. Sense that ter- like Katie really only comes through. She's like, we call her our anal sex ninja. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, like, you know, yeah. you know what would be cool? There's actually, you know, there's those. There's a there's a sex toy that you can get. Where it's almost like if someone was wanting for double penetration. Oh, oh yeah, I was. Right? I literally was like, "Wait, I have my butt plug. Why yeah. don't I do that?" I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, wait, but, knowing wait, but your is body what you're, is yeah. what you're talking about different than a butt plug. Is it actually more like a anal like penis? <laughs> yeah, it's no. It's actually like um, I and I wish I had like seen this. I just I encountered this once. Once I had a threesome with a married couple. And then whenever I was with them one time, I remember the woman, she was on top of me and I was like laying down with my legs apart. And then he remembered cause she is like a super vixen published model. And she had some, got some free swag, like sex toys people would send her. And he was like, wait, I saw this toy and he got it. I didn't really pay attention to what he had, but he was somehow he was able to put that device on him. And then like he, when he would be thrusting in her with his dick, then the other part would be going in my pussy. But if you, it, but I think it was mainly just made for like double penetration. So I definitely look for something like that. That's I didn't get cool. to invest the pack, investigate the packaging or anything like that. I just got to reap the benefits. And I was like, that was a really fucking good creative idea. And I, I like that. I love, I love when someone, someone else, else brings up double penetration before I do. I feel so seen. You know it's a good day. Moment. You know it's a good it's, day. No, it's a good day when someone else brings up DP. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, man. I'm adding that to my Christmas This my, is my, awesome. My, my so I know, I know we got to wrap it up, but we, I have two more sort of just rapid fire questions for you. Yes. You talked a little bit about um, manifesting with your orgasms, and we've talked about sex magic and everything on this show before, but just because you are such an expert, do you have any like quick tips on, on really manifesting with your sex? Like how, how can people elevate that to the next level if they're already sort of experimenting with sex magic? Yeah, it goes, I have like a three month program, a group program and one-to-one coaching on this. And I've had clients like manifest new Mercedes as a company car from their, their work, get a divine partner, making more money, all kinds of amazingness because we're turbocharging our law of attraction. But so there's a lot of things too that we might have blocks to manifesting that need to be addressed before we get to that. But also using tantric self-pleasure rituals, you don't always have to do with a lover. You can though, but have it holding that intention. So even if you don't know all the sex magic rituals that I do, even with you're with your lover, your partner, 
when you're having sex, you can think of the intention of what you're wanting and like a mantra, like these are the things that I'm wanting to manifest. Yeah. And then when you're in the orgasmic state and you're having orgasms, it's almost like we're a little bit out of our bodies when we're in our full orgasmicness. And it's almost, you know, and then our, our intentions get sent out into the universe more powerfully than when we're fully down here in our body. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're more connected. We're in kind of in a different zone. And so it's really good. And in the after, in the afterwards, you just keep thinking that and reciting that over and over in your mind. And I've manifested celebrity clients, amazing opportunities, divine lovers, like so many things that are so wild through doing these rituals. Right. And for males, males don't want to orgasm or ejaculate to do that. They actually want to minimize their ejaculation. So they're increasing their magnetism, their energy. They're not draining themselves. Because if you look at males and females, females will be, will be more talkative right after sex. So we're getting charged up by orgasms, but males right. will fall asleep. That's because it's draining. So if it's draining their life force energy, but even if your lover, if he has an intention that he's wanting, you can both hold that vision together and you can orgasm thinking about what you're wanting to co-create with him. Mm. Mm. I love that. Well, yeah. at this point, I'm sure everybody is wondering about all of the programs and resources you have and how they can work with you. Can you please share with us um, the resources and pro different programs that you have so our listeners can get um, an idea of how they could potentially work with you? Oh, I'd, lo I'd love this. Um, I do have just, if people aren't quite ready yet, I have like master classes. I have a female orgasm master class that goes over the 12 different types of orgasms. And I share that from like a perspective of a nurse, tantra coach and sex for right? And we go over all of the anatomy and everything. Awesome. And that's just on replay now. Uh, you can buy, get the replay and watch that. I have a pleasure bundle. I have a lot of courses on my site at yestantra.com. You can check those out. I also have um, an intro to Tantra course, which is a six-week course for Tantra that I just released. I re my birthday month is October, so oh. I released it. And so everyone's just at their six weeks and just finishing it up. And it, mm. it's been so amazing. And you have lifetime access to that. And then I have a group program called the OM method, the orgasmic manifestation method. And that there you can get on the wait list for that because that begins again in the spring. Awesome. And then there's one-to-one -one coaching. So on my site, you can request a free 30 minute discovery call with me and we'll see like, what are your, what blocks you might be having to pleasure intimacy blocks or what are, how are you just wanting to level up and then be sure we're a good fit to work together and which of my programs would serve you best. So you can request a complimentary call that way. And then I just have a couple of resources here. I have an audio that I shared that maybe you could put in the show notes where I, I go on a rampage. I was just telling someone that does helps me with my emails and writes my content. I just voice memoed her this whole rampage about female orgasms. And she was like, that's so good. I'm going to have that as something to give away for free because everything you drop was like so fire. So <laughs> if you sign up for you can sign up for that through my website too, or through the link that will be shared here. And then I have a 12 days to self love ebook, which is an intro to Tantra, the chakras. It has videos of me teaching things. And this is this thing, this, the practices in there help with, um, healing from heartbreak and preparing to understand your body and tap into your own power. And, you know, just, it's just an ebook, but it's really powerful. And one person shared with me, she hadn't worked with me. And she says, I went to my therapist and my therapist said, what are you doing differently? They could see huge shifts in her. She's like, Oh, I've been doing this ebook. I did 12, it's 12 days. And they were like, uh, they wanted to see my website and check it out for themselves. And so she emailed me to let me know that her therapist could see like a huge difference in her just wow. from my ebook. So I have a lot of tools because wow. I'm super awesome. passionate about doing this, sharing this with the world because I got really frustrated as a nurse and working critical care of seeing people die with regret at the end of their life. And there was, I would hold space for them, but there's nothing I could do to change their life path. I was like, well, that sucks for you that you didn't f fully experience, or you just held back all this time because you're worried what everyone thinks, but are all those people here in the hospital with you? No, they're not. Um, and we just have this one life, right? So I, when I saw how Tantra healed me, I was like, oh wait, this is an opportunity for me to meet people earlier in their timeline mm. and their life path. And also share with them my wisdom I know as a nurse, optimizing nutrition because our body is an instrument to experience pleasure and um, and then hopefully guide them in ways where they'll avoid having to be in the hospital or have illness later. So that's my goal. And so I really, when I work with my clients, it's like a 360 thing. I want to know what your goals are. 
um, what your current blocks are, what you're experiencing, what traumas, what foundations you have, and like keep leveling up from there. Mm, that's awesome. Mm. Yeah. It's 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 palpable that this is really authentic for you and like you really care. And it's amazing that you come from both a medical and a spiritual background. I think that's really unique Mm -hmm. that you have to offer that. And, um, you're hilarious and your stories are so profound and I'm juicy from this conversation. You said this was going to be a juicy episode and you weren't kidding. I feel juicy. I feel inspired. Tantra has been something that I've wanted to, um, you know, dabble in and I feel like this is maybe a sign from the universe (laughs) and for anyone else yeah anyone else who's listening and is having that same feeling reach out to Dominique at Yes Tantra she's fantastic that's why we had her on the show to share with you guys today and um yeah just thank you so much for being here this was you're so welcome and thanks this has been this has been so fun I love this thank you so much and oh I also want to share real quick I did bring my good luck charm with me (gasps) You guys, okay, so for the people watching us on YouTube, you can see what she's holding up, but she is holding up a beautiful pink clitoris, right? What is that? Just like a, like a, she's licking it now. (laughs) It is actually this really amazing thing that I got. I'll have to show you. I'll have to unveil it. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Oh, that is so this god. is Where like you know this is I need one. This is I'll, I'll share with you. Um, I it's from someone in named Rosie Reese. She's based. Yes, yeah, so she was on our show. We've had her on the show. We had yeah. her on the show. Yes, I have her sacred I squirter. Yes, oh I just got that too. That one's so fun. So I got this, and this is my new paperweight for my desk. You know, because I'm very practical. And so then, if you open it up, Amazing. you open it up, and then inside here is the. The clitoris, and you can just I take love that out. That. Yes, because wow. people don't. Really people like. think this is like how the sex life is. You think it's all here, but deep down, right. the tip of the yeah, iceberg. The so yes. much is happening. There's so a lot much more the happening. clitoris than the little bean <laughs> that yes. everyone thinks is the clitoris. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Well, we definitely we're gonna have to reach out to Rosie to to get us some, some of those for our desks as well. I feel like I definitely need one of those on my desk. <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to be Me on too. the clit talk, I have to have this handy. You got to have a fancy oh. ray. <laughs> you're amazing. so mindful. Oh. oh, well, thank you so much for being here. This was incredible. Um, you're amazing. And I feel like this is just the beginning of a beautiful partnership with you. Um, since we have I'm looking been. forward to it. Yeah, I, let, let's talk more. I have so much to share and yeah. I'm the, the, each one of you is so much fun to be with in this group. I love the, I love the energy of everyone oh, here. So it's really thank amazing you. the work that you're doing and that you're opening up, you know, people's minds and op- having these conversations. Mm, thank you. Mm. Thank, you, thank so you so much, much. Dominique. All right. Thank you. And with that, Clitorati, you know what time it is. We're going to see y'all next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Blessings. Yeah.